Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm going to show you how to build your very own Neo Geo Pi X. This is a Neo Geo X docking station powered by Raspberry Pi 3. For those of you out there that are not familiar with what the Neo Geo X is, it was released back in December of 2012 by the manufacturer Tomo and it was licensed by SNK Playmore. It was a hybrid console, a lot like what the Nintendo Switch is. It was a handheld portable that you could play Neo Geo games on, but then you could dock it inside this case and then play it on your TV. Unfortunately, even though it looked awesome, it ultimately ended up failing and SNK themselves pulled the plug, stating that the quality of the product was not meeting their expectations. But even though it failed in the gaming market, the Neo Geo X is still highly collectible. And finding a complete system for under $300, it's considered a great deal. But you can also just buy the Neo Geo X docking case, and it works great as a Raspberry Pi 3 case. And I purchased mine from AliExpress.com, and out of all the places I searched, it seemed to have the cheapest prices. So if you're interested, I'll make sure to post some links down below. So this is the Neo Geo X docking station that I purchased, and notice that it says it includes all this other stuff. It doesn't include any of that. The only thing it includes is the docking station itself. And just for size reference, here it is next to the original Sega Genesis Model 1, and it's very close to the same size. It's just a little bit thinner. Now let's see what's going on inside the case. We'll go ahead and open this up. And right here is where you would have put the Neo Geo Portable. It has an HDMI output. It also has an audio visual or composite output and a USB power input. To build the case, you're gonna need a few different things. Of course, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi 3 board and I am using RetroPie for an operating system. You're also going to need a plug and play cord set for the inside of the Neo Geo X docking station. And these are all the cables you're going to need to plug in your Raspberry Pi 3 to the docking station. For the outside of the case, you're going to need an HDMI adapter because on the back of it, it is a mini HDMI. So you're going to have to have something to convert it to a standard HDMI output. You're also going to need a power supply. I'm using a 5 volt 2.5 amp wall charger. And for the cord itself, I'm using a PSP USB charging cable, and it works great. It plugs right into the back of that Neo Geo docking station, and it fits perfectly. For a controller, you do have an option to buy a Neo Geo arcade stick that's USB powered, but it is a little bit pricey. For myself, I'm just using this wireless Mad Cat Street Fighter controller, and it works pretty good. All right, let's start off with putting that Raspberry Pi 3 inside the case, and we want that on the left side of the case, about 3 eighths of an inch from the side of the case and the front of the case. Now this step is optional. You don't have to secure your Raspberry Pi 3 board, but I would recommend it because it does help keep it nice and secure. I just used a small drill to mark and drill the holes, and I under drilled the holes so they're quite a bit smaller so that screw could get a good bite. And for the screws, this is what I used, and they're about four millimeters long. And with that length, they don't pop through the bottom of the case. Because if they were to pop through the bottom of the case, that just wouldn't look good at all. Now it's time to start plugging in the cables. This is an HDMI adapter and one end of that's gonna plug into your docking station, and then the other end's gonna plug into your Raspberry Pi 3. Now, the next cable is gonna be an audio-visual cable, and you don't need to use this, you only wanna use this if you wanna use composite mode, so I'm not using it, so I'm just gonna set it to the side. Here's our USB power cable, and this is gonna have two leads on it, one longer, one shorter. The shorter one's gonna plug into the Raspberry Pi 3 board right here, and then the longer one is going to plug into another adapter that's going to convert it to a standard USB plug. So we're going to go ahead and plug those two together and then plug that into the Raspberry Pi 3 board. Now for this, I did have to do some mods to this cable right here. Due to this USB cable having such a tight fit, I did have to remove some of the sheeting because that Raspberry Pi 3 board has to be in a certain place, otherwise that docking station case won't close properly. The end of the cable had some sheathing that looked like this, and I removed that with an X-Acto knife and that allowed that cable to flex just a little bit more and gave me the room I needed inside the case. So here's how that cable looks once it's plugged in. And as you can see, it's a very close fit. And like I said, that Raspberry Pi 3 board has to be in a certain spot or the lid won't close properly. So I'm all done with the inside of the case and that's all there is to it. It's actually a very easy mod. And for the outside of the case is where you're gonna use that second HDMI adapter. Now they do make HDMI cords that do have a mini on one end and standard on the other, but this adapter is quite a bit cheaper. And I really like the way this case opens. You just hit this button in the front and it springs right open. And that gives you nice easy access to Raspberry Pi 3. You don't have to remove any screws like with other cases. And it's very handy. 
And if you're having issues with the case not wanting to stay closed and pop and open on its own, that means that Raspberry Pi 3 needs to be adjusted towards the back of the case just a little bit. There's kind of a sweet spot you gotta find where that case will not close properly. Once you have everything hooked up correctly, both of the USB ports in the front will be functional along with the power button. But I would like to mention when you use this power button, that will function as a kill switch, so when you turn that off, that's going to kill the power to the Raspberry Pi 3. If you wanted to make a soft shutdown switch, you could possibly modify the menu button that's located right here. This is a mechanical button that pushes a lever that's on the inside of the case. So right there, you can mount a momentary switch and make a soft shutdown if you wanted to for your Raspberry Pi 3. Alright, let's go ahead and power this up. And this is a custom intro splash screen that was put together by Ruckage1. Neo Geo has a lot of great games. They're really known for great 2D fighting games and shooter games. For my RetroPy image, I'm using a custom pre-made image that I got from Arcade Punks, and this is called the All Killer No Filler Edition. And this image comes with a pretty big collection of Neo Geo games, along with a bunch of other systems. But for this video, I modified the image just a little bit to display Neo Geo games only. And for the theme on this image, they're using a Hursty Emulation Station theme. The original Neo Geo AES console was released back in the early 90s, and it was way ahead of its time. It had 24-bit graphics, and it was the first home system to have arcade perfect graphics. And it was released in the US with a price tag of $650, which was a lot of money back then. That's equivalent to well over a thousand now. So collecting for the Neo Geo is very expensive. But luckily, the emulation on Pi 3 for Neo Geo is pretty good. In fact, out of all the games I've tested, I haven't had issues with any of them. But I'm sure there's a few games out there that don't emulate quite like they should. Here's the game Metal Slug, and I've tested this game and all the sequels, and they all seem to play just fine. But what I think Neo Geo was most known for back then was its great 2D fighting games. They had so many great series. They had King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown, Fatal Fury, The Art of Fighting, The Last Blade, In World Heroes, just to name a few. For the very first World Heroes game, I got a story for that. I used to go to this pizza place when I was a kid called LBMs, or Little Big Men's. And I'm not sure if they were a chain restaurant or not, but they might have only just been here locally. But anyway, they had an arcade room there. And one of the arcade machines there was World Heroes. And that used to be one of my favorite games to play. And my favorite thing about the game was the deathmatch mode. So in deathmatch mode, how it works is on the outside of the ring, it either has spikes, power lines, or fire. And if the players hit any of that, they interact with it and get electrocuted, light on fire, or harmed by the spikes. At that time, there was no other fighter games like this at all, and I had so much fun playing this game. But the only place I could play this game was at this pizza place, because there was no way at that time we could afford the Neo Geo AES console. It was just way too much back then. Eventually, that pizza place closed down, and I didn't play that game again for years, and I even forgot the name of the game. And I actually started searching for the game back in the early 2000s, testing all kinds of different fighting games out, looking for this World Heroes game, but I couldn't remember the name of the game, and I couldn't even remember who made the game. In fact, I had no luck finding the game at all until the year 2007, and I was browsing on the Wii Virtual Console, and I came across a game called World Heroes, and I thought to myself, maybe this is that game. And I finally found the game I was looking for all these years, World Heroes. Of course, a lot of years have passed, and the game is not quite as cool as I remember, but I still like it quite a bit. Alright everyone, it's time for me to go. If you like that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.